Hey everybody, this is Guru Francis Serrano from Filipino Martial Arts School and I'm answering um, some questions uh, sent to me by uh, Tribu FME's administrator, uh, Albino Loco. Uh, and, you know, I'm just very humbled and, and honored that, that I was asked to do this. But let me just kind of, let me start off by reading the letter that he sent me. First off, we'd like to thank you for court conducting this interview with us. Uh, here at Tribu FMA, we do believe in reaching out our hand in friendship to the teachers and grandmasters to get their insights into what FMA really means to me, really means to them. So thank you very, very much for this uh, wonderful opportunity. And I'm honored, humbled, and blessed that you guys uh, asked me to participate on this. And I will, you know, give my best answers. Um, so let's start with the first question. Uh, so first off, Guru, how old am I? How old are you? And how long have you been practicing <coughs> uh, Filipino martial arts? I'm 41 years old. I'll be turning 42 at the end of this month. And I've been practicing martial arts since uh, for 22 years now. Uh, next question. Exactly how old are, were you when you got into FMA? And were you into martial arts at an early age? And did you have any training in other martial arts? Uh, I think I was 19 years old when I started Filipino martial arts. Uh, I knew it was after I turned in, uh, uh, after I graduated from high school. Um, and it was, uh, and I graduated in class of 97. Um, and then... Um, and it, I, yeah, I think it was 19 years old. Um, was did I did I start at an early age? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think 19 is still pretty young, early age, but I, it is considered an adult. So I guess technically, no, I did not start at an early age. And did I try any other martial arts? No, this is the only martial arts I ever tried in, only because my father. I, I loved martial arts I, when I was a kid. I loved the movies Karate Kid, um, you know, uh, the Jean Claude Van Damme Bloodsport movies. I love those. I just love those movies. But my father was a pacifist, um, and he did not believe in um, in any form of, of, of violence, and that we should definitely. He wanted me to to learn how to defuse the situation before escalating into anything else. But you know, what can I do? Um, so I did not learn any other martial arts um, until I was old enough. Until I became an adult, uh, even though my father passed away when he was when I was sixteen, I still waited till I was over eighteen before I started. Uh, looking for a martial arts uh, program. Uh, next question: Why did you? What 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 made you decide to train FMA? Um, well, you know, I didn't just like many of you guys. I didn't know FMA even existed. Uh, I was born in the Philippines, but I grew up here in the United States. But I did not know FMA existed. The only martial arts that I knew predominantly were, of course, the more popular ones like karate, uh, taekwondo, and uh, kung fu. Um, so I wasn't really familiarized. I was familiar that that FMA even existed. Um, I talked to one of my friends and he was telling me that he practiced our niece. And I said, what's our niece? And he said, it's stick fighting. I'm like, okay, what's stick fighting? And then he goes, um, it's a, it's Filipino martial arts. It's a style, it's a fighting style of the Philippines. And I'm like, why do you call it stick fighting? Cause that's what we learn how to fight with, with sticks. And then, oh my goodness. I, if, if I could see, if I could meet the, the naive kid that, that, that asked this next question, I would I don't know. Uh, he basically, I basically asked him like, what if you don't have a stick? Oh, geez. That's like, like, oh, I, I regret now, of course, in hindsight, I regret asking that question, but yeah, I did ask that question. So I didn't know FMA, um, existed. So once I knew that there was a martial arts that's indigenous to the Philippines, I started doing my research. I started going to, I, I started, um, uh, getting martial arts magazines. I started going to uh, libraries, uh, looking for videos and, you know, this is before, you, uh, YouTube and Google ever existed. So, um, you know, the mere fact that I did that much research, um, you know, made me very, very proud. Um, but so the moment I started, the more I learned about it, the more I was curious about it. And the more curious I, I was about it, I wanted to get some answers, direct answers. And that's what made me um, decide to really sought, uh, seek out FMA. And the more I, the research, the more research I did, the more I fell in love with it. Um, and that's why I wanted to train FMA. Uh, can you please tell us what style of FMA um, uh, did you? I train in. I train in. Uh, I train in Visayan Legacy uh, Eskrima. Uh, I've been actually one of the founding members of when we opened up the, this program in 2007. And Visayan Legacy Association derives most of its techniques and styles from the Dosipares multi style system. Um, okay, next question. If you were to, if, if we were to ask you one, the one thing that stuck out during your first week of training, what would it be? I, look, it's not even the first week of training. I'm going to tell you the first moment I started training with Chief Joe. Uh, Chief Joe um, was a great person, a great instructor. 
But when I got there, uh, he wanted me to, to work out with him and work on the sombrada. Now, um, for those of you, for, for many of my brothers and sisters here, the sombrada is, of course, is the attack and counter uh, a drill that many FMA programs uses. And, you know, ours is not an exception. But after a few minutes, he would be like, okay, what did you, he would ask me, what did you notice? And I'm like, uh, I noticed that you were really good. And he goes, and then he goes, nope, keep going. And so we started doing our thing again. And then he goes, all right, what did you notice? I was like, I noticed that the ground was on below me. I mean, I had no idea what the answer was. And I was just grasping at straws. And then we went again and then he goes, the sun was bright, the grass is green. I have no idea. And finally, after, uh, I'm sure what felt like, a, a, you know, years in, in from his perspective, he finally gave me the answer. And then he said that... Uh, and you know anybody can hit anybody with a stick, but it's it's another it's a higher form of FMA to be able to control your opponent, and that's when I went. <laughs> I I was my mind was blown away by um, by that, and I just couldn't I didn't even know if such things existed in this world, and I'm just very like what the heck. Uh, so right there and then I knew that um, I had no idea of what's happening, but I wanted to start my journey because I want, I want that. And that, and that's, so that was, um, uh, uh, what was the question again? Like, if, if, what, if the one thing that stuck out with me is like how much um, I didn't know and I wanted, but I didn't, I wanted to change that. And I started that day at that moment. Um, what made you decide to teach Filipino martial arts? And is there any, okay. So what made me start teaching Filipino martial arts? I have this quote, that, that, that stuck out in my head when I read this question by William Shakespeare uh, in his writings. He said that there are, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some greatness is thrusted upon them. Um, so in 2008, I decided to um, answer the call of the Lord and go to seminary school. Um, but it wasn't just that I decided to go to seminary school. I decided to go back to, sem to the Philippines and go to seminary school. Um, so I sold everything I owned, uh, no, pretty much everything I owned, and and, and uprooted my whole life and moved to the Philippines. And while I was in the Philippines, one of the things I was also very excited about was that I get to train Filipino martial arts in the Nanay land, in the motherland, in the Philippines. And so I was like, yes, I want, I want to, I want to learn directly and what, what, what is, you know, in, in my home country. And so, uh, when I got there, I, 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 I hooked up with a guy named, uh, Jomar Obejas, who turned out to be who became my my best friend in the Philippines. So hey brother, musta na? Um, uh, sana I mean hopefully not safe kana man sa Pilipinas pero ingat lagi kapatid. Um, so anyway so um, but when I and then so if you ever been to Manila and you want to be at the epicenter of where all the Filipino martial arts or most of the Filipino martial arts club is, go to Luneta Park and in Luneta Park there's a statue of Lapu Lapu and that's where all the Filipino martial arts groups uh, tra uh, train and it's not just one school too it's multiple schools and multiple groups so it's like they they're cohabitating so um but there was nobody there that teaches dosi paris and i even asked some of the instructors if anybody there teaches dosi paris and said no none that they that none that they know of so i contacted cebu headquarters and i actually got a chance to talk to supreme grandmaster dioni and i said uh, supreme grandmaster uh, is there a school that teaches Dosi Paris multi-style system in Manila? And he said, oh, there's only one. And I'm like, okay, who's that, sir? And he goes, that's you. You teach uh, Dosi Paris there. I'm like, uh. So then I contacted uh, Master Sunny, the head of his sign legacy. And then he just laughed at me. He goes, well, I guess you're teaching now. So that's what happened. I, I, I mean, there was, there was an aspect of my life that I do want to eventually teach, but I, wasn't think, I didn't think it was going to be that soon. And so I, I didn't really choose to be a teacher. I was voluntold to be a teacher, but you know what? It's been the, one of the best decisions of my life. I love teaching, and um, I think it's, it's, uh, it's just great. And so it's, to me, that's my, that's my place within the FMA industry, industry is to be a teacher. Um, then the next question was, um, any advice I would give to potential students? Absorb as much as you can. If, if there's... If if there if the the wealth of knowledge of Filipino martial arts was equated to a to the Pacific Ocean, be a sponge, absorb, learn, uh, watch, uh, and and ask as many questions as you can. One of the things that I regret, and I'm uh, is that I didn't I didn't 
um, asked more questions when Chief Joe was still alive. Luckily, I still have his brother and my other teachers, so I still have them as, as a wealth of resource. But, you know, we all miss Chief Joe. Um, so just ask, man. Just absorb as much as you can because, you know, these guys are not going to be here forever. So the only way that's, that they're, that they're, they're, um, uh, a piece of them will be here is if, they, if you, push it, you, you take what they gave you and, and give it to the next person. So absorb, be a sponge, learn as much as you can. Uh, any thoughts on the evolution of FMA? Okay, so this question, I like this question, I really do. But I, I think this question might get me in a little bit of trouble. But let me just premise this by saying, this is just my opinion. So um, I, I, have, I have mad respect and love to all the FMA instructors that teach us out of their garage. Because man, I, I, you know, I teach out of my garage. And I think that's just freaking awesome. Uh, for the people who teach us in the parks, I mad respect and love for you guys as well. Because... You know, you're you're pushing it forward. That's the bottom line. You're pushing FMA forward. Um, one of my, but what I think what the next evolution of Filipino martial arts has to be is a prof the the prof uh, to professionalize uh, Filipino martial arts. Um, what I've been noticing within the industry is that um, in, within the martial arts industry that I've been noticing a lot of schools are actually adding um, uh, a Filipino martial arts as part of their programs that they offer. And um, and then when you when you d dig deep into the background of the instructors that offer FMA into their programs, they they have none. They they probably went to a couple seminars and all of a sudden said now they're an FMA instructor. Uh, I'm not saying every school's like that, but I've seen a lot that that that, that is that that's what they do. Um, and I remember a friend of mine, a, a brother of mine, a brother in, in arms and in life, he told me that you know, hey Francis, how much. How many years did it take you to learn FMA? I'm like about 20 years, and I'm still learning. And he goes, in a seminar, it's about five to six hours long. And he told me this. You can't expect to fit 20 years worth of knowledge into six hours. You just can't. So, so with that being said, you know, I mean, there a lot of these instructors who claim to know FMA really don't. So they're, And then so they're scrambling to to offer FMA, but then they, they they're not in my opinion, are not qualified to teach FMA. And so, but why are they doing that when they know they're not qualified? It's because they see the value, the financial value of Filipino martial arts into their program. So, but what's, what's the industry has been making Filipino martial arts do is keeping the price, the value of it so low so that it, you know, anybody can, you know, put a quote unquote, you know, be able to do it and, or maybe get an instructor and not pay them as much to do so. Well, let me just say this. Filipino martial arts is not a, a side item. It's the main effing dish. Okay? It's it's the filet mignon, it's the lobster, it's the Kobe beef, it's the uh, it's the um it's the uh, you know, the most, you know, it's 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 uh, uh what's that called? Uh, uh you know, whatever. It's what, what it's, it's the most fanciest meal out there. It's not it's not something it's not something you get through a McDonald's. It's something that you get at the at the three Michelin star restaurants. That's to me what FMA is. And the thing about it is that we believe that it's always been a side dish. Well, again, let me ask you this. If it's such a side dish, then why is all these schools, you know, scrambling to be certified instructors? It's because there's value within Filipino martial arts. So, and I've said this before in, in my Bayani Talk videos, is that um, nobody's going to put value in what you do until you put value in what you do. So you want to, in my opinion, what's the next evolution of Filipino martial arts? It's professionalized FMA. Again, not not knocking the te the, the schools that teaches out of the garage or in a park because I teach out of a garage, but I'm also ready to take my my school to the next level. I'm looking at commercial sites where FMA is going to be the predominant martial arts that's going to be taught there, and um, I'm not saying I'm, that's the only style that's going to be taught there, but it's going to be the predominant style that's going to be taught there. That's the things that 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 um, if you guys wanted, if they wanted to add something else on, they can. This is going to be the main dish in in the, in the school, and it's just about time um, that we need to start doing that. We need to start putting value in what we do. I'm not saying you guys can't teach at a at a local studio, but make sure that you know that they're you're, they're not watering it down for you. You know, they they want to have that street cred to say that they're teaching FMA into their program. 
Now, I'm not saying all schools do this. I'm not saying all, you know, karate, Krav Maga, uh, Mar uh, Taekwondo, or any of the other schools that they do this, that that's what they're doing. But many of them do. That they see the value of FMA, they want to put it in there, but they don't want to pay for it. That's, that's what we need to stop happening. The next evolution of FMA is to make FMA the, the you know, uh, to professionalize it. And brothers and sisters, if, if there's money to open, uh, if, if there's money within, to, you know, to teach FMA, guess what? Now we're going to start getting more and more people wanting to open their own Filipino martial arts studios, their own, their own, um, uh, uh, their own program, because there's money in it. And I truly believe that there is money in it. Um, and, and that, you know, and then, and then Filipino martial arts is going to become more of a, of a staple. Now, this is by no means mean that I'm, I'm advocating that FMA becomes a McDojo. No, keep your quality, keep the quality high, keep, keep your, do not succumb to, um, you know, peer, you know, bit, uh, financial pressure to water down your system. No, keep it the way it is pure as it is, but put a business mindset on it. That's all I'm saying. That's what I think the next evolution of F Filipino martial arts. Where is it heading now? I think that um, the plan to put this on the Olympics is still kind of a good plan, but I, I've been I've been in this for twenty years and I don't see any um, I don't I don't see any answer in sight. Um, and so I think that this is the next thing. I think that if we make this a viable business, that's what's gonna they, uh, that's gonna ev elevate Filipino martial arts to the next evolutionary steps. That's just my thoughts. I hope I hope that it's you know is giving you some insights. And I again thank you to Albino Kapatid. Thank you very much for for allowing me to be a part of this. And um, let me just kind of use my closing tagline. Um, my name is Guru Francis Serrano from Filipino Martial Arts School. Peace out. God bless and keep swinging them sticks.